<laughs> oh my god hey guys the black critic guy i'm back with a brand new video allow me to recant a tale if you will so Roughly five years ago, it's it's like more like four years and a couple months ago, but let's just round it up to five. Five years ago, on November 5th, 2017, I released a review for the then latest Marvel Cinematic Universe film, Thor Ragnarok. And I went hard on that film. I did not hold, I did not pull back any punches. I was extremely critical about the film. I had a lot of problems with it. I still don't like it. And at the time, I gave it the lowest possible score any Marvel Cinematic Universe film got. Now, did it deserve the first ever lowest score? In, in hindsight, no. I think Thor The Dark World, if we're really to be honest, should have gone that low score first. It's almost universally considered to be the worst film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, I don't think it's the worst film. I think there are other contenders, probably. But overall, I did not like Thor Ragnarok. I made it very abundantly clear when I did the review. And then there was the reactions to my review. And let's just say you guys did not pull back any punches as much as I did not pull back any punches for Thor Ragnarok. You guys gave it to me, at least in the time that I did the review. People were extremely critical of what I had to say. And that's perfectly fine. Hey, it, you can't be a critic if you cannot receive criticism yourself. And I was perfectly fine with the criticisms being thrown my way. However... I did find it oddly strange that everyone was defending that film. Like, oh my god, Tony, you're you you're totally blind. You don't get it. You you just you're a hater. You can't appreciate good things. Thor Ragnarok is a masterpiece. It's one of the best Marvel films ever made. Taika Waititi revived the franchise. It was great, Tony. You you're just a hater. And now here we are, nearly five years later, with the follow-up to Thor Ragnarok. Thor, Love, and Thunder. And it is being decimated by the critics. Decimated by fans. Enjoyed by the casuals. No, not surprising there. And what's some of the biggest complaints about the film? Now, I should, I should, um, I should uh, say this right off the bat. I haven't seen the film. I have not seen the film, so don't, don't worry. I'm not going to spoil anything from the film. But I have been looking up reviews. I, I always watch Jeremy Johns whenever he drops a video. Uh, I know the Critical Drinker just dropped his video recently. And I've seen other prominent reviewers talk about this film. And my dear friend, Comic Uno, the mother of us all, or the mother to us all, she posted recently on Facebook and Twitter her thoughts. And not too pleased about the results of the film. Which, again, not, not too surprising. So why am I bringing this all up? Why, why am I saying all of this? Well, you know, I would say that I hate to tell you so. I, I mean, I, I would say that I hate to say I told you so. But I actually don't hate saying that. So I'm just going to say it loud and proud. I told you so! I told you so! I warned you guys five years ago about this shit. I told you so. And then all of a sudden, you're all going to come out and be like, oh my goodness, man. What what did they do to Thor? Thor's just not Thor anymore. You know what? I miss the old Thor. Oh, the movie's style over substance. Oh, it's more like a comedy than it is an action-adventure film. Oh, the way that they handled the characters were terrible. I said this all the way back in 2017 with Thor Ragnarok and you guys killed me for it. You killed me for it. What? 
And now all of a sudden, you guys, you guys are upset? You're shocked by this revelation? Like, how... Guys, this is the same team that made Thor Ragnarok. They made this film. And now you're all of a sudden surprised that this is the result? Really? Like, I... That's the thing that, that for me, that's the thing that surprised me the most. Is that you're all surprised that this is the result. You're surprised that they didn't stay true to the Mighty Thor story with Jane Foster. You're surprised at how they treated the villain, which I heard out of everything else, the vil the, the acting at, at least, not the villain himself, but the acting by Christian Bell was actually still good. But they they they, they didn't treat that character well. Like <laughs> it's it's funny to me. It's comical. Every complaint that I made in Thor Ragnarok, I'm starting to hear in Thor Love and Thunder. Style over substance. They didn't handle the characters that well. It felt more like a comedy than a Thor film or an action adventure film. I said all of this. I said all, all of it. I said all of it in my Thor Ragnarok review. I said the same thing then as people are saying now. And I bet you if I go watch the film, I will feel the same way that I felt about Thor Ragnarok as I felt now with Thor Love and Thunder, which again, have not seen, but am I shocked to hear this? No, I'm not. Again, this is the same team. The same team that made Thor Ragnarok. The same team that you all praised for reviving the Thor franchise. The same team that you gave glowing reviews to for the risk that they took and the change in style. Now all of a sudden, five years later, now you have a gripe? Now you have a problem? Man, get the fuck out of here. At least I was consistent. I, I told you guys years ago about this. And you know what? Time has validated my opinion. And now I bet you all of you are going to go back to Thor Ragnarok and look at that film and think, you know what? This film was also very much like Thor Love and Thunder. Very style over substance. It felt like it was trying to be more of a comedy with all these quips and all these gags and comedy moments. But they didn't really focus on the characters or didn't really focus on like having good action adventure pieces. You know, some good action, some good visuals. But that's again, again style over substance, right? So yeah, I only wanted to get on camera to just yell at all of you and say I told you so because uh, I did tell you so. And I'm not surprised at the reaction, the reception that Thor Love and Thunder is getting right now. Because again, this was to be, pre this was to be expected. It's the same team from Thor Ragnarok basically making Thor Ragnarok 2. And now all of a sudden you're all ha you all have complaints. Where were these complaints five years ago when you killed me for making the same complaints that you're making now? So yeah, am, am I am I feeling petty right now? Yes, I'm ex I'm I'm the petty king. Sorry, Steph, I'm the petty king. All right, am I a little jaded? Am I a little upset? You damn right I am. Because how could you have killed me back then for giving those opinions when you are having those same opinions now? Get fucking real, dude. So yeah, you know, uh, I told you so. Uh, I feel really great to be validated for the review that I gave five years ago. All now finally coming to fruition and people are starting to see... The points that I was making in that review. And if you haven't seen my review, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll put the link in the description. You can go ahead and check it out for yourself. But man, it is it is pure comedy just seeing the reaction to this film. And me just sitting there like... It's like that one, one joke in Futurama or the... I guess it was kind of like a meme at one point. But you know that meme where, oh, I was doing all that before it was cool. I was the one hating on the style over substance of Thor, of the new Thor franchise, before it was cool. Alright, I was the one berating this shit before it was cool, when everyone else was jumping on the bandwagon. I started this shit. 
I don't care what anybody said. I don't care if you made a review two minutes before my review dropped. I was the one. You could you could nail it down, the pinpoint the start of this movement. It was me. My review started this, okay? I'm the petty king. <laughs> yeah, that's all I really have to say. Um, so uh, if you've seen Thor Rag or Thor, see, I almost said Thor Ragnarok. If you've seen Thor: Love and Thunder, I'd love to know what you thought of the film. Did you actually enjoy the film? You know, it's it's fine if you like it. By the way, am I saying that you're a bad person or that you're stupid for liking this film? No, no. Film is very subjective. You know, certain films are going to appeal to others that won't appeal to to another group. Right? There are still people I'm sure that would say Thor Ragnarok was a great film. And there will be some people that might come around and say, no, it actually was a bad film. So I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody for liking Love and Thunder. Keep that in mind. I'm not shaming anybody for liking the film. The whole point of this video was just a long, I told you so, and just me feeling validated for my opinion on Thor Ragnarok, which I was freaking killed for back in the day. And I'm going to soak in the I told you so energy. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to soak in the validation, I guess you could say. Uh, again, Petty King. I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck. I'm petty as fuck about this. I, I, will, I will go to my petty grave with this. Anywho, so yeah, that's... Um, I just wanted to say I told you so. But let me know what you thought about Love and Thunder, which I do plan to see this weekend if my friends want to go see it, but... I'm not expecting anything. Uh, I should say also, for the record, I was curious. There was one thing about the trailer that made me curious to see this film. And no, no, it's not It's not how hot Natalie Portman looks, but man, god damn, did she look fine. I was tricked into believing that this might have been a personal journey story about Thor realizing that, you know what, maybe I'm done being a superhero, maybe I'm done with all that, it's time to retire, someone else should take the mantle, but uh, from what I was told, that was complete BS. Shame. Although not surprising though, not surprising, This so that sounds exactly, that sounds exactly right, because Thor Ragnarok's trailer tricked me into believing that it was going to be this, oh yeah, this uh, epic sci-fi adventure film where Thor is trying to find his way back to Asgard and he's jumping through different realms to get back to his to his home when all it was was he went to a dumpster planet then he went back home oh well so I guess I shouldn't believe any trailers in that regard anywho so I, I've I rambled enough I told you so I warned you guys about this and now all of a sudden you guys want to be upset about it <laughs> get whatever all right this is what you asked for this film thor love and thunder is exactly what you asked for you asked for this film and now you want to complain if you complained with me back in the thor ragnarok days this would have happened i guarantee it but because you all gave that film such glowing reviews such heaping amounts of praise of course Marvel was thinking to themselves, we gotta do this again. They do that all the time. If something worked the first time, they think, okay, well, it ain't broke. So don't fix it. Let's just keep doing Funny Thor. Let's keep doing watered down Tony Stark version of Thor. Like that's what Thor has become. Gone are the days of the noble Thor. Gone are the days of the interesting Thor that went from an arrogant prince into a man of integrity. Gone are those days. Now it's funny Thor. We get funny Thor. We got fat Thor. We got funny Thor. We got quirky Thor. We got Ghost, Ghostbusters 2016 Thor. So you've asked for this. You got what you wanted, audience. So you have no right to complain now. You. This is what you wanted. You asked for this. So guess what? You're going to have to eat it now. Anyway, I'm Tony Watt, the second Black Critic Guy. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and uh, I told you so. Peace, you two.